G'day everyone, my name is Ben Orchard. In this session, we're going to be talking about visualizing the Internet of Things. Factories, you know, from the outside, from 30,000 feet, a lot of factories all look the same. They really, you know, they just sort of meld into each other. And I think the, the Internet of Things or the Internet of Everything can, can do much the same. When you look at it as a whole, it just tends to blur into almost nothing. We try and break it down and we try and make it meaningful, but it's, it's really just too big, it's too nebulous. So, you know, we, we've got these fantastic infographics and they, they play a really important part in helping our minds try and grasp just how huge this is going to be this year and in the, in the coming years. But it, it's still really hard to get a grip on these numbers. I mean, take a look at this uh, predicted growth for the Internet of Things. They're talking millions and millions and millions of sensors and devices. What does that mean? I mean, it's like our factories from 30,000 feet. What is a factory? You know, what, what's in the factory? When you look at it from this far away, you can't really tell. It's tough to visualize all these different devices. But it's not just graphs and numbers. Let's have a couple of key people, key industry businesses here, weigh in with their predictions. Here we've got John Chambers, CEO of Cisco, and in a uh, interview with uh, USA Today, he made the following comments. What I think is going to dominate the IT industry over this next decade is the internet of everything. Every sensor, every device in the world is going to be connected. This will completely transform healthcare, education, manufacturing, and the profitability of companies. I mean, even that's huge. It's exciting, but it's really huge. Every sensor, every device in the world is going to be connected. Uh, it, it sounds fantastic, but it's still kind of hard to get a hold of. Another quote here from the Vice President of the ARC Advisory Group. IoT for manufacturing encompasses cloud computing, analytics, big data, mobility, and universal visualization. Improved business performance, production efficiency, and asset optimization remain the core objectives for manufacturers to implement this technology. Again, you know, rather specific analytics, big data, mobility, universal visualization. That's my favorite term right there. But it's still kind of hard to, to get a grip on exactly what we're looking at here. So I decided to break things down a little bit. Let's try and hone in a little bit. I mean, the numbers have been predicted. Businesses are investing millions of dollars, but what is the IoT to you and to me? You know, so here, what I've done here is I've grabbed a screenshot, a Google Earth screenshot of my house. Now, again, from this height, all the houses look the same, don't they? There's no, I could describe to you what my house looks like from this distance, but it's still gonna be tough because frankly, we don't know exactly what it is just yet. So let's zoom in a little closer. Now we're getting to my house. That's my dog escaping from my automated garage door. See, because when you get down to living with a device, actually living with a sensor or a network, it becomes part of you. It's no longer a number, an expected growth percent. It becomes far more meaningful. It really does become personal. So in my slightly geeky house, I've just taken three aspects here to focus in on. We've got a set of Philips Hue lights, a Belkin Wemo outlet switch and Twitter. So what have we got here? Why have I chosen those three? Well, we've got lights, power and information. I've tried to pick three items that are common no matter what industry you're in. I've also picked these devices because they're relatively cheap and they're commonly available from, frankly, most hardware outlet, most hardware store outlets now sell these devices. They're fairly representative also of the IoT space in the home. The Hue Hub plugs into your network and talks wirelessly to its three RGB LED lights. The Wemo connects to your home Wi-Fi and it allows you to turn an outlet on or off. And I'm pretty sure everyone here is familiar with Twitter. So let's quickly review how this works. What are the pieces and parts that make up this? First of all, you've got the network. Since the advent of computing networking decades ago, 
Combined with wireless LAN and of course cellular radio, virtually any device can now communicate and interact with any other device. Now I'm not sure if I'm embarrassed or proud, but I have some 45 devices on my home network. There's three people in my house, so for crying out loud, 45 devices. The point is this, the network is all around us and it's just about everywhere. You combine that then with cloud computing. For example, my son runs a Minecraft server at home. A Minecraft is a, is a computer game that he really enjoys. I personally run a Linux server and there's lots of different services running on that Linux server. And we also have a media NAS where we have music and movies stored. So we have cloud computing running at our house, but of course, not everyone runs their own clouds. But let's face it, we've probably all used or certainly heard about Netflix and Pandora movies and music. So also a solid chunk of the IoT is cloud-based. So coupled with the network, there's really no escaping cloud computing. And of course, mobile devices. Now we have a few different mobile devices in our house. My wife loves her iPad, but my son and I are Android guys. And I'm a firm believer in using the right tool for the job. I'm brand and OS indifferent. Use what works, frankly. But that said, the mobile device that we choose to use every day is usually a very personal decision. And even if it's thrust upon us by our company or by our bus, we still end up personalizing it. You know, from the wallpaper to the apps that we install and the way that we organize those apps. Our mobile device is our mobile device. So, let's bring all of that together then and we've now created an entire ecosystem of connected processes and interfaces from anything to just about anything available from anywhere. It's my IoT, and that's the way it should be. Because you see, we're gonna end up personalizing the Internet of Things to our needs. We're gonna want and we're gonna to need to visualize it the way we want. My IoT is different from my son's, and both of those are very different from my wife's IoT. And that's just fine. That's the way it should be. That's the way it needs to be. So. It's not just sensor numbers on a predicted, graph, uh, predicted growth chart anymore. They're my sensors, my data, my mobile devices, my network. The IoT is very personal. So what are we missing? Universal visualization. This is what we're missing. Right now, this is what I have to deal with. It's not ideal. But frankly, it's what the bulk of manufacturers are delivering. I'm sure you're all familiar with what a hassle it is to swap from app to app, from smart device to smart device. Think about your process on your mobile device. Is it set up exactly the way you want? Is it set up the way you need? Or are you having to flick around a lot to scroll up and down, pinch to zoom, move around, flick between apps to get the information that you want? Now, don't get me wrong, it's fun at first. You know, when I got all these devices, when I got my Hue lights, you open up the Hue app, you set them all up, and then you change scenes, you can change colors, it's pretty exciting. And then you go to the Wemo and you, you, know, you set that up and then you, you really only use that to turn the, the outlet on or off. And then, you know, I say, well, I wanna send a tweet. You know, I'm really excited about my new gadgets and I wanna tweet about it. So then I've gotta close all those and go to another app just so that I can send a tweet. It's really, really awkward. I, I just frankly, I've ended up with a phone full of apps that are all disconnected and I'm constantly having to flick between them all. They're smart devices, but they're not connected devices. And interestingly enough, to find the solution to this, we need to go back in time. We need to go back to 2007, back when Apple redesigned the phone. For the most part, there was no internet phones back then before the iPhone. The iPhone really was a game changer. It was that way because it had a true web browser. It really was the internet in your pocket. No more mangled mobile phone sites or, or, or mobile sites. It was, as we say down under, ridgy dig or true blue. 
It means it was the real thing. It really was the entire internet in your pocket. We, we need to be really careful that we don't underestimate or forget just how big a deal this really was. Do you remember when the iPhone was launched in 2007 that there was no App Store? I mean, frankly, we've, we're all so used to the App Store and a billion apps have been downloaded and installed. But back in 2007, when the iPhone was first released, there was no App Store. Steve Jobs believed that web applications would provide all the functionality that users of his new iPhone would ever need. But the web wasn't quite there yet, so people pretty quickly built native apps, and in 2008, when the iPhone 2 was released, the App Store came with it. And it's only just now, after all these years, that we're seeing a return to the web browser. Think about it. It's the one app that's pretty much guaranteed to be installed on every device that you own or carry. The web browser is perfect for data presentation. It's a user interface. You can interact with other people with it. You can connect to systems with it. You can do your job with it. You only have to look at the, just the huge range of Google products that run in a web browser to see how universal and how powerful the web browser really is. The humble web browser works brilliantly for those things and it's just as fantastic for the Internet of Things. Here's an example. Here's a custom web page that I've built in a browser just for this presentation. I've got my lights, I've got my power, and I've got my information. It's all in the one dashboard. It's my information on my device arranged the way that I want it. Now all I have to do is open a web browser, hit the page, and there it is at my fingertips. I can set my lights just the way that I want. I can turn my power on and off. I can send and see tweets in the Twitterverse with no effort at all. It's all there. All hail the web browser. It really is the one app to rule them all. It's the one app to bind all the loose ends of the Internet of Things. Okay, so before we get too excited, how did I do that? Well, you could roll your own universal interface. You could, but you'd better have some pretty serious programming chops in order to do this because you're going to need to know about a lot of different technologies and you, you're probably going to end up with a fairly unmanageable app that really frankly would only work on one, maybe two devices. And you can forget about changes, troubleshooting and debugging. I know this because there's a good chunk of my code in this screenshot. So I know this from personal experience and personal pain, quite frankly. Building a universal visualization tool for your IoT is a huge task. Have you all heard of the WAF or the BAF? Okay, that's wife acceptance factor or boss acceptance factor. Rolling your own universal interface is a sure way to kill that factor. And if you're a programmer, you're going to need a whole bunch of different tools to do this. So what happens then when your wife or your boss wants a font or a color change? Something very simple. Forget about functionality. Just font some color changes. Can they do it? Can they go into, do they know which tool to open up to do, uh, to make the change that they require? What downloading, uploading, you know, refreshing or anything do they need to do? So what if though, if you could utilize just one tool to build your interface and to view it? What would that one tool be? What is one tool that everyone has installed on their devices and everyone knows how to use? Well, yep, you guessed it. You don't have to install any tools because it's a web browser. The entire application can run right inside your web browser. I built this screen, you can see it here, in a web browser. So by sticking to the standards that modern web browsers support, you don't need to download any plugins. There's no Java, no Silverlight, no Flash, just pure HTML5 and other standards technologies that are built into the browsers like uh, Google Chrome, Firefox and Internet Explorer 10 and above. So just think about that for the moment. Your build environment is the same as your display environment. 
You can swap backwards and forwards between the two as simply as just clicking on a link. It's pretty compelling. But hang on a minute. What if your mobile or tablet is a different size than mine? We just talked about personalizing, right? So I pretty much guarantee that your mobile device is probably different than your coworker's mobile device. Can we really code once for a web browser and then have it deploy everywhere? The IoT is everywhere, so this is a really big deal, right? We need to make sure that we can tick this box. I mean, am I really going to build a page for every different screen size on every device that's out there? For example, my wife's iPad, my son's Moto X, my Android phone, and my Android tablet, just as an example. If this is the case, if this is what I'm stuck with, having to custom build web pages for each web browser, then it's really not universal, is it? Well, no worries, mate. Modern web browsers today support a technology known as SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics. You can build your screen any size you want, and SVG will ensure that it automatically and gracefully scales every object on the screen with no extra effort on behalf of you, the developer. Standards are going to be hugely important to the IoT. So we need, really need to make sure that we leverage every single standard that we can lay our hands on. Let's take a look at this in action now. We're going to have a demo and we're going to show uh, my house back in California. It's got a server running on it and we're going to show how we can use the web browser to develop and view different screens. So let's jump right in. Okay, so this is my house and I'm in view mode. I'm currently looking at live data from, from my house and we can look at you know, different information here, simple as clicking on a, on a link and show uh, movement and times and power and uh, electricity over here. So we can look at lots of different things, but let's go into build and show how easy it is to actually build these screens in a web browser. So I'm gonna now go into what's called build mode and did you notice how quickly my entire development environment there just loaded? I'm in the exact same Google Chrome tab as where I started out. So I've set up a couple of screens here just to, uh, in the interest of time. So we're going to start at my house. And I want to show you how easy it is to hook a button to uh, my Wemo here. So uh, you can see the video and you can see that scale a little bit. So I'm going to go down to a thing called a gadget and I'm going to throw a button over here. Now I'm going to make it really crazy big so that everyone can see this. What we need to do now is link this button to a tag. So I'm going to drill down here, it's a numeric variable, and I know my Wemo on-off control is called, oddly enough, Wemo on-off. And that's it there. So uh, we'll leave it uh, entitled Wemo, and I know when the light turns on it's going to be like a, an orangey colour. That's it. I'm done building, so let's actually see this in action. I'm going to go save all changes and switch back into view mode. Notice that I'm still in the exact same browser tab as I was in my development. Well, of course, you all want to see it work, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and you can see it uh, open up there. I've got my Samsung Galaxy S4 phone here, and uh, I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to uh, connect to my house server on my phone. And we're just going to jump into the screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the Wemo off on my phone. And you're going to see that uh, mirrored over on the, uh, on the PC. So there I go. I click off on my smartphone. And we've just turned the, uh, the Wemo off. I've used a different screen. And I'm going to go back to the exact same screen. And uh, you can see the, uh, the screen there. So let's go and just neaten this up a little bit. I'm going to go back to Groove View. This is how it looks on a desktop, but on my handheld, uh, the button is underneath here. So I'm just going to move that into the center, make that nice and neat, and I'm going to save that, and I'm going to refresh here. And my button is now moved underneath. And when I hit it on the uh, uh, Samsung, you can see it also then gets echoed on the, uh, on the PC. So this is how I can build two different views, one for tablets and PCs and one for handheld. And I can put whatever information I want in whatever order 
on whatever on, on each other's screen. So that's that's something really simple, really trivial. Um, but I understand that um, you know not everyone is into home automation, and that's appropriate because we're talking about the Internet of Things, and we're talking about universal visualization. So here we've got an Allen Bradley controller. Now this is actually at uh, Opto 22, and I've got a camera focused on that. We'll go back to the desktop because you can probably see that a little a little easier. Again, we'll make that nice and, and oversized. And we're going to hook up a button on this as well to show how easy it is to hook a button to an Allen Bradley controller. So what we need to do now is select our OPC UA tag server. We're loading all the tags. I'm going to drill down to my Allen Bradley controller. Here's my Compact Logic, and there's my digital out. We're done. Digital out LED. Let's go into uh, handheld view, center that up a little bit, and save all that. We're going to see the uh, the PC page, and it's exactly the same as the uh, as the Wemo. We've got a page on my uh, on my mobile device and a page on my PC, and they match up. So now when I toggle on my mobile device, you can see it turn on on the PC, and you can see the video camera reflected that output point there turned on. So we took, toggle it off, we can see the Allen Bradley turn off the output, and we can also see it turn off on my mobile device. But what if you don't want to give control? What if you, well I'm not suggesting maybe the wife acceptance factor, but maybe the boss. Maybe you want to limit the boss and not actually give him an output to, uh, to toggle on and off. Let's go back into build mode. Remember, all of this is in a standard web browser. I'm in Chrome and I'm just uh, using the exact same tab. So here I've got a Satec power meter, again back at Opto with a video camera on it. And there's no control here, but I want to monitor the data because maybe I don't have a video camera, but I just put the two there so that you can see them, uh, see them line up. So I'm going to drag over some text and I'm going to do much the same thing with this. I'm going to connect to my OPC tag server and I'm going to drill down to my Modbus meter and I'm going to bring in some data from the SATEC. I'm going to bring in the amps, which is the same as the, uh, the top uh, display there. So I'm going to give it one decimal place, no, two decimal places. I'm going to make that nice and big so you guys can see that. And of course we're looking at amps. So there's my data, and I'll just scroll that out a little bit. And again, for my handheld page, we'll just center that up, and we're done. Now I can go back, I can save those changes, and we can see that the amps match exactly what's on the video. I'll go to my mobile screen. We'll go to my Modbus. Since I've saved it, I just refresh it. It downloads the app onto my phone. And there's my amps on my phone matching up with the amps on the PC, which of course match up with the amps uh, that the SATEC meter is actually doing. And that's just through, as you can see there on the screen, Modbus TCP. What I wanted to show you there was just how quickly and how seamlessly by using a standard web browser, we can move in and out and hook up any device you can just about imagine. It's really quite remarkable by using the web browser that is standards compliant. So I'm going to go back to my presentation here. So there you have it. I've just shown you a thing called Groove and you've noticed that we didn't write a single line of code and that it was so easy because it used a web browser. It's a universal interface, everybody understands how to use it. Groove is just one possible solution to the universal visualization challenge that IoT faces. Put simply, Groove is a way of taking information from the devices and the sensors on the left and presenting them to the devices on the right. It's a way of taking data from lots of different sources and presenting it in a standards compliant web browser. There's two basic ways to deploy Groove. There's a hardware solution and a software solution uh, that can run on a server or potentially in the cloud. It helps to have universal connectivity, obviously, in order to have universal visualization. And these are just a few of the systems supported by OPC UA. So if you recognize your automation, control, or data acquisition system from any of these logos here, then there's a very good chance that it's going to work with Groove. 
And as you've seen, with SVG, the browser is king on PCs. Windows has been king in the automation space for the longest time. But now that the web browser is king, do things change a little? Of course they do. Now my beloved Linux might really gain some traction. And of course, there's that other Mac thing as well. I've showed you on my Samsung S4 mobile device, but of course, just about all mobile devices now come with a modern browser. And it doesn't matter whether it's a phone or a phablet or what size the phone is, whether they keep getting bigger or whether we finally go smaller. There's only a couple of different screen sizes on iOS devices, but there are hundreds, literally hundreds of different screen resolutions on Android-based tablets. Again, SVG means everything is going to scale beautifully for those. And because SVG is built into standard web browsers, for the most part, that's even going to include smart TVs, web-enabled smart TVs. So the one screen that you develop can be deployed on anything from an iPod Touch all the way up to a large screen TV. No matter what screen size you're on, you can view your personal dashboard of your Internet of Things. The web browser really is the king. But don't just take my word for it. Grab your mobile device and try it out. We've set up a Groove server uh, back at Opto22, so you can jump onto HTTPS demo.groove.com, log in with a username of trial and a password of Opto22 and check it out. There's a fish tank and uh, a few other devices there you can play with and turn things on and off. Can't build any screens, but you can certainly have a lot of fun looking through all the different uh, demos that we've got and all the different video feeds that we've set up as well. The IoT, like a factory or a house, it looks the same from far away. It just blurs into sameness. But the Internet of Things is personal, and web browsers are universal. So if you bind these two things, then you can visualize your data on your device the way you want. The killer app for IoT is universal visualization. My name's Ben, and thank you very much.